Hi there. For this assignment, I chose to do uh, the story of the oval portrait from Edgar Allan Poe. Um, reason I chose this story was because I like art. I enjoy doing art, so the title itself kind of just intrigued me to cover this story for this uh, assignment. So to begin, just for some context, I'm going to read a little bit of like what the summary of the story was. So the narrator, he sought shelter in this old mansion with his valet uh, or manservant named Pedro. Um, he finds himself in one of the rooms and um, he kind of looks around at all these strange paintings that are on the walls and there's a book in this mansion that he picks up and begins to read and it tells kind of every story of each painting that's on the wall in this mansion. So um, kind of towards midnight he adjusts the candle that's in the room with him and the adjustment of that candle illuminates a space in the room that he didn't first see. And on that wall that was now illuminated was this oval portrait. Um, in the portrait, it was a image of a young girl, uh, as quoted as um, she was on the threshold of womanhood. Um, he's interested in this painting as soon as he sees it, um, but then he becomes appalled by the actual image. So once he notices the painting, he goes to the book that he has and he begins reading kind of more about it to learn more about what he's looking at. Um, and in the book, it describes how the woman was a young bride of the painter of the image. Um, and she was a fairly good wife. But the only issue was she was jealous of her husband's art that distracted him from her. So this man paints a portrait of his wife and becomes more and more obsessed with the image because he wants it to be like the most accurate likeness of her. And closer to the end of finishing this painting, he becomes so obsessed with this painting that he spends all of his time just looking at this painting instead of focusing on her. Um, and during this whole time, she's sitting there with, for this portrait. So um, naturally, she becomes weaker and weaker. And she kind of gets more and more upset and kind of heartbroken at the fact that he is so disinterested in her. Um, and towards the end, once he's just about finished with the portrait, he finally takes the time to look at his wife and um, notices that she has died. Ooh, spooky. Um, so the cause and manner of this character, like the cause of death of this character, I would imagine it to be just kind of like because she was sitting there for so long, I would imagine that it's just like malnutrition. And you know, there's the idea that people can die of heartbreak. So I think maybe that had something to do with it. She was just so saddened and all that, that there was really no kind of will to live maybe so I think but a lot of it because she got so weak I feel like a lot of it was just malnutrition and the and maybe that her muscles atrophied because she didn't move and stuff like that um the timeline for my treatment if I was recalled to store these re restore these remains um a pretty good while I wouldn't say necessarily a set like it'd be an hour or two hours kind of a thing. Uh, I would say it'd take a pretty good while, depending on how long she was deceased. Uh, it really depends because she could also just be, depending on how long she sat there for and depending on when she died, she could be decomposed or beginning to decompose. So a lot of things could have like physically and chemically changed with her body during that time. So it really just depends on how long her body was there since she died. 
but since we don't have a, like a, she was dead for a week, and then he finally noticed after a week. Um, there's nothing kind of like that to really say. It's kind of hard to determine. It really depends on how the condition of her body, but I would imagine given the fact she was getting weaker and weaker and sadder and sadder and she just kept sitting there, she's probably atrophied or emaciated. Uh, depending on if even if she like used the bathroom and stuff, maybe she could have like jaundice and that nitro nitrogenous waste buildup kind of in her body. Um, again, if she was dead for a long time, she could be decomposing. So there could be like all the discolorations mixed in with that or like skin slip and purge and all that kind of stuff that could be involved in it. Um, so given these treatments, or like what I would propose for her body, I would say that before any kind of restorative art processes could take place, she would need to be embalmed before doing those processes because the tissues need to be firm and dry to be able to do anything. The only thing I could say that you could get away with before embalming is like kind of being able to somewhat set the features in place just so when you embalm her, whether it's arterial embalming, hypodermic embalming, surface embalming, all that kind of stuff, uh, that they kind of set in place for you so they don't move as much um, while you're doing that. Uh, so the lessons of anatomy and facial proportions that were presented in the class and how they relate to the case. So like I said, given the fact that she might be pretty emaciated if she was weaker and weaker and didn't have much nutrition during that time, a lot of that might be a bit of concern, especially in like the face and the hands. If she were to be viewed, kind of want to build it up to a more natural looking and presentable image of what the family would or family and friends and visitors would be normal with seeing. So in this case, I would kind of recommend having like a photo be brought in to be able to fully kind of um, restore her natural look. Um, but I think it's important to understand too just the anatomy of the eyes and the face and the mouth and how they should all look and making sure that in this case, because even if she is decomposed, you kind of have to understand where things would fall on her face and on other parts of her body to be able to accurately reconstruct her uh, face to a natural looking um, appearance. So I think if she was pretty emaciated and, decom and she was kind of in the process of decomposing, um, it'd be important to know kind of where the mouth would line. So if you're rebuilding it with wax or creams or cosmetics or anything like that, it'd be easier to figure out where those proportions should lie so she can look the most natural um, in the casket. So my methods and techniques I would use to achieve an open casket viewing, it'd be a lot of work. It would not be an easy feat to... Um, to get through, but depending on where she is in the time period of, you know, kind of being dead, depending on where she is and how decomposed she is and all that kind of stuff. Um, again, it really just depends if she kind of died more recent to being found out that she was dead. Um, it might be a little bit easier just because it's, you know, you don't run as much of a risk of having the decomposing issues. So it might be easier to kind of uh, embalm her and then restore her with like the waxes and the cosmetics. But if she was decomposed, it'd take a lot more work because you'd have to have a lot more wax. You'd have to do a lot more feature building. You'd probably have to have, you know, you'd have to kind of rebuild the whatever tissues she has left and on her body to be able to kind of rebuild her into a natural state and then you also have to make sure that you cosmetize her in a proper way so that her natural color 
is correct and all that kind of stuff and you just have to make sure with the wax too you form it correctly and make sure the proportions are correct so yeah that is my case analysis for the the unfortunate demise of the woman in the oval portrait